Imagine stepping into a dimly lit theater in the heart of a bustling city. The year is 1972, and the anticipation in the air is palpable. As the velvet curtains draw back, the world of cabaret unfolds before your eyes, a seductive and intoxicating spectacle that leaves an indelible mark on your memory. The hauntingly beautiful melodies, the provocative choreography, and the enigmatic characters all converge to create an unforgettable cinematic experience. Your first encounter with the 1972 movie Cabaret was more than just a mere film. It was a journey into the decadence and disillusionment of pre-World War II Berlin. Lisa Minnelli's mesmerizing portrayal of Sally Bowles, a spirited cabaret performer, swept you off your feet, while Joel Grazieri, an enigmatic master of ceremonies, sent shivers down your spine. It was a film that challenged societal norms, explored the complexities of human desire, and held a mirror to the darkness that lurks beneath the surface of glamour. Perhaps you recall the iconic scene in the Kit Kat Club, where the pulsating rhythm of the music seemed to synchronize with the beating of your heart. Or maybe it was the chilling final moments of the film, where the joyous facade of the cabaret crumbled, revealing the stark reality of a world on the brink of chaos. But before we delve further into the depths of this cinematic masterpiece, let's uncover some random facts about cabaret that you might not be aware of. These intriguing tidbits will shed new light on the making of this iconic movie and the talent that brought it to life. Did you know that the role of Sally Bowles was originally offered to Hollywood legend Shirley MacLaine? She turned it down, paving the way for Lisa Minnelli's unforgettable performance. And here's another fascinating nugget. Cabaret was nominated for a staggering 10 Academy Awards, ultimately winning eight, including Best Director for Bob Foss. It's a testament to the film's enduring impact on cinema history. So, as we journey back to the intoxicating world of Cabaret, let these intriguing facts enhance your appreciation of this cinematic gem. And remember, the allure of this film, like the enchanting cabaret itself, is timeless and irresistible. Stay tuned for more insights into this iconic classic. Cabaret, a 1972 film directed by Bob Foss, is a mesmerizing exploration of the decadence and political turmoil in Weimar-era Berlin, as adapted from the 1966 Broadway musical. The story revolves around an American cabaret performer, Sally Bowles, played brilliantly by Lisa Minnelli, who becomes entangled in a complex relationship with a British writer, Brian Roberts, amid the rising Nazi influence. Set against the backdrop of the Kit Kat Club, the film employs a unique style of storytelling, seamlessly blending song and dance numbers into the narrative to underscore the character's emotions and societal disintegration. Joel Gray's portrayal of the enigmatic MC adds an eerie and iconic dimension to the film, symbolizing the growing darkness of the era. The film masterfully balances the exuberant cabaret performances with the ominous undercurrent of political upheaval, making it a poignant commentary on the fragility of freedom and the human spirit. Cabaret left an indelible mark on popular culture, earning critical acclaim, numerous awards, and enduring relevance. With its themes resonating across generations, a testament to its timeless storytelling and unforgettable characters, ensuring its place in cinematic history. In the 1972 movie Cabaret, several songs from the Broadway production differ in their presentation. While Brian arrives, Sally plays Don't Tell Mama in the background. When Sally seduces Brian, it couldn't please me more as on the gramophone. The piano plays married as Sally gets ready for dinner with her father and reprises during a discussion about marriage, this time in German by Greta Keller. At lunch, the ensemble plays Sitting Pretty, also heard on the gramophone at Max's estate. When discussing the Nazis, so what serves as background music in a scene? English author Christopher Isherwood, who created Sally Bowles in a 1937 novella, appreciated the movie's attention to his career. However, he believed Lisa Minnelli was too talented for the role. He based Sally Bowles on Jean Ross, a 19-year-old amateur singer who aspired to stardom, in contrast to Judy Garland's daughter. In the film, Brian Roberts expresses surprise that Sally Bowles is American differing from the original British characters in Christopher Isherwood's stories and the 1955 adaptation I Am a Camera, where both Sally and Brian are English. This insight into the film Cabaret sheds light on its unique adaptation choices and their impact on the characters' backgrounds. It also highlights the author's perspective on the casting of Lisa Minnelli. 
These details provide a deeper understanding of the film's creative decisions. In the 1972 movie Cabaret, during the opening number Will Common, the MC, portrayed by Joel Grey, utters the line, Outside it is windy, but inside it is so hot. Interestingly, in the original stage musical, he said outside it is winter instead of windy. The reason for this change was practical. The movie's exterior scenes were filmed in warm weather, so the mention of winter wouldn't have made sense. After the success of the 1972 film, Gene Ross, the real-life inspiration for the character Sally Bowles, faced unwanted attention from journalists until her death in 1973. She expressed her frustration, stating that reporters claimed to seek knowledge about Berlin in the 30s, but they seemed uninterested in the harsh realities of the time such as unemployment, poverty, or the rise of the Nazis. Instead, all they seemed to want to know about was her personal life, particularly how many men she had been involved with. A noteworthy tidbit related to the film is that years before Cabaret was filmed, Lisa Minnelli, who played Sally Bowles in the movie, had performed maybe this time during a stage appearance with her mother, Judy Garland, at the London Palladium. Cabaret remains a significant film for its portrayal of the decadent and politically tumultuous atmosphere of 1930s Berlin, as well as its memorable performances by the cast, including Lisa Minnelli and Joel Grey. In the 1972 movie Cabaret, actress Lisa Minnelli took inspiration for her character, Sally Bowles, from the jazz age icon Louise Brooks, who appeared in films like Pandora's Box and Diary of a Lost Girl. Lisa Minnelli collaborated with her father, director Vincent Minnelli, to design her hair and makeup for the role. When she asked her father if she should emulate Marlene Dietrich, he advised her to study Louise Brooks instead. In a 1972 interview with Dick Cavett, Lisa Minnelli revealed an interesting tidbit about her preparation for the role. She attempted to meet Jean Ross, the person upon whom Christopher Isherwood based the character of Sally Bowles. However, Ross declined to meet with Minnelli as she disliked her popular association with the character. Additionally, it's worth noting that the movie adaptation of Cabaret made a change from the original Broadway version. In the original Broadway production, the main characters were an American writer and an English singer. In the film adaptation, they became an English writer and an American singer. These insights provide a glimpse into the creative process and choices made during the production of the iconic 1972 movie Cabaret, highlighting the influence of Jazz Age icons and the adaptation of the source material. In 1972, the film Cabaret hit the big screen, leaving an indelible mark on the world of cinema. While not directly related to the original Broadway production, this movie brought its own unique charm to the story of the Kit Kat Club in 1930s Berlin. One interesting tidbit is that Joel Grey, who portrayed the enigmatic MC in the original Broadway production of Cabaret in 1966, reprised his role in the film adaptation. Grey's performance was so remarkable that he earned both a Tony Award and an Academy Award for the same character, a rare feat in the world of entertainment. Intriguingly, Anthony Newley, a versatile talent known for his contributions to the classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory in 1971, was almost cast as the MC in Cabaret. This casting decision could have brought a different flavor to the film, as Newley was known for his singing, acting, and songwriting prowess. Furthermore, Cabaret received recognition from the Smithsonian Institution in 2003 when it was selected as one of eight films to be preserved for future generations. This honor reflects the film's cultural significance and enduring impact on the world of cinema. In conclusion, Cabaret remains a timeless classic, with its unforgettable characters and performances by actors like Joel Grey. The film's preservation by the Smithsonian Institution underscores its enduring cultural importance. And while Anthony Newley didn't ultimately step into the role of the MC, his close association with the project adds an intriguing what-if scenario to the film's history. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the mesmerizing world of the 1972 cinematic masterpiece, Cabaret, I invite you to pause and reflect on the myriad emotions it has stirred within you. This timeless gem, directed by Bob Foss and starring Lisa Minnelli and Michael York, has left an indelible mark on the annals of cinema history. Perhaps it's the sultry allure of the Kit Kat Club that still lingers in your mind. Or maybe it's the powerful performances that resonated with your soul. 
Was it the haunting melodies of Will Common or the poignant storytelling that tugged at your heartstrings? Whatever it may be, Cabaret has a unique ability to evoke personal memories and emotions in each of us. Now, it's your turn to shine in the spotlight. Share your cherished memories, your most profound thoughts, or even your favorite quotes from the film. Let's create a mosaic of experiences that pays homage to this cinematic triumph. As we wrap up this cinematic reverie, I extend my heartfelt gratitude for your time and interest in exploring Cabaret. Your connection to this film is a testament to its enduring magic. Keep the conversation alive and share your thoughts, for the beauty of cinema lies in the stories we create together. Thank you for joining me on this cinematic journey. Until next time, remember that the world of Cabaret will forever be illuminated by your insights and memories. With Cinematic Appreciation.